how to develop your intuition and trust your inner guidance. This is about the harmonization process, a four-step method to transform inner conflict. It's like when you're getting in your own way when it comes to fully expressing your life purpose. Today's episode is about breaking free from those kinds of blocks. Hi, I'm CM Rieger, and this is the Golden Age Timeline Podcast. So it's common for people that some days you feel on purpose, ready to go, focused, and other days you feel entirely disconnected from that. (laughs) Sometimes you can feel disconnected for years. In this episode, I want to introduce you to a powerful four-step harmonization process I created a number of years ago that's worked for thousands of people to break them free. It allows you to transform inner conflict or those inner voices of sabotage that could become your allies working together in harmony with you instead. So many of my clients have felt a victim to these voices without realizing that maybe all they needed to do was really listen to what was underneath the naysaying message. And in some cases, They just may need help to re-educate, reframe, and restore them to a more holistic, supportive perspective. And in many cases, they needed to then create a collaborative win-win agreement with them. So I call these inner committee members also stakeholders. They hold a stake in your well-being and forward movement in life. And while you may have people in your everyday life like that, I think you also have them at an energetic level. Whether you want to call them parts of your personality or inner guides or something else, that's up to you. I call them inner guides and I think we all have them and can call on them anytime to help. And we can also upgrade, retrain, or replace those guides if they aren't doing their job in the best way possible. (laughs) We do live in an inverted system or have been up until recently. So sometimes those guides get inverted in their original purpose, meaning they stop your growth, they get in the way, they create unnecessary obstacles. But through the power of your intention and through connecting to the higher mind, you can switch that. So the ego, the personality is simply a kind of software with a series of instruction sets that tend to work in story form. These mind stories can work for you or against you depending on how you program them. So this process helps you program them in the right way. And we'll call upon a voice called the mediator. And this is like a neutral benevolent voice or energy you can call upon to help you do that. It's always there to sort through these programs and upgrade them where necessary, but you do have to call upon this voice. It's like the prime directive in Star Trek. It will help you, but you have to ask first. The problem is many people don't even realize they can ask and get this kind of help. As such, many people live for decades struggling away on their own and then one day in a pit of despair reach out for some kind of help not knowing who they're asking and lo and behold, help shows up. Perhaps it shows up in the form of an insight, an idea, a transforming idea, a synchronicity, opportunities, helpers, miracles, or everything on a project going from stagnation to flowing and success. I'm sure you've experienced something like that at least once, if not regularly. I find it shows up regularly now because I ask and because I've gotten to know who is helping me. (laughs) Now, lest this sound way out there for you, there is plenty of growing scientific evidence to show that we maybe are living in a virtual reality game whereby you've agreed to play a certain game here on Earth and... There's a pit crew, like a race car driver's pit crew that is there to help you, nourish you, fuel you, coach you, egg you on, if you stop and let them help you. You could, of course, keep driving past until you run out of gas, which many people do, but why waste this incredible pit crew resource? That said, sometimes the race car driver's pit crew get into arguments with each other and with you. They have different ideas about what you need to keep going with the game. 
that's when you might find yourself stagnating. It's a lot more common than you think, especially if you don't take the time to get to know the team, to understand their needs and motives and ensure the team is working together in harmony. So that's what we're doing here. Most people do have some kind of inner conflict about moving forward with their life purpose or in a new career direction. I'm sure you've experienced that when at a crossroads in life, parts of you want to go in one direction, parts of you want to go in another direction. Some parts are just frozen in fear, not wanting to make a decision, and some want to over control the process. Here's another metaphor that might be helpful. It's like working with the board members of a company. You bring on people with different expertise to advise you as the CEO. You often need to hear out the different perspectives and find an outcome that works for the majority of board members or stakeholders. And while you may have dozens of voices to contend with, for this exercise we'll focus on six that usually have a big opinion about your life direction. The benefits of doing this is that it allows you to reframe inner conflict so that you can move forward with your life purpose. Or as I said, it might be a new career direction or a more specified business focus. Now, sometimes you are going along in your business or role in life and something is off. <laughs> it's not that you need to change what you're doing, but more how you're doing it. Often our life purpose is more about a being state than specific tasks you're doing. For example, I've essentially kept the same kind of business for well over 20 years now in terms of what I'm doing. I have an expertise in the area of managing transitions, enhancing communication, upgrading mindset, helping leaders and entrepreneurs grow in their role. But I've had to change who I'm being <laughs> cyclically in order to continue to fulfill my life purpose because that changes who I serve, how I serve them, how I connect with them. So, you know, as the world changes, your life purpose changes. As you grow as a person, your life purpose changes. So you need to constantly be checking in and course correcting. And that's why doing a process like this, the harmonization process right now at a time in history when the world is changing so dramatically can be very useful so that you stay relevant to the world, so that you're serving the world that is emerging now. It can literally save you from years of false starts, procrastination, going off in the wrong direction. It also creates a sense of alignment, feeling in alignment, both inside and out, which is such a relief for so many people. One of my clients who was teaching at a college and had written several books and was starting out on the speaking circuit had this to say, I was so inspired after I did this harmonization process a few years ago, I got clear on a new vision, but then the doubt crept in. This powerful form of inner dialogue could not have come at a better time. I got clear on what I had to take care of before I could fully move into this new direction. As soon as I did, the procrastination stopped, the opportunities flowed in, and I had far more inner harmony. I could sleep at night. Another of my clients who had a job but was building a business on the side as a coach, she had this to say, wow, what a powerful exercise. I've done some inner critic work in the past, but not at the level of sophistication that this entails. I was caught off guard by the level of emotion it released, which created a huge breakthrough. I was literally able to make a clear decision and leave my job without any regrets. So let's look at some examples of common inner committee members. There's often the visionary, security, quality control, public relations, the auditor, and then you, or what I also call the end user. Each of these voices has a positive role to play in your life, but if left unchecked or out of balance or over or underdeveloped, can block your success and happiness and forward movement. So let's look at the first one, the visionary. The visionary ensures you move forward with your life purpose. It's like the founder of the organization or the CEO. It already knows what you're here to do and who you are here to serve. And in some traditions, this might be called your soul, your soul's destiny. 
If overdeveloped, this voice can lead you to give up all aspects of life in favor of just serving your purpose. For example, neglecting your family or your health, living in poverty, just to be vision focused. On the other hand, if this voice is underdeveloped, you can end up leading a life of quiet desperation where you know there's more to life, you have a purpose, but it's buried deep inside somewhere and you're ignoring it. You're maybe just living a safe, unchallenged life, but deep inside is a huge feeling of emptiness or lack of fulfillment. Now, often people can't become clear on their true life purpose or their vision because the other voices drown the visionary out. Let's meet some of those now. Security. Now, security in a company ensures everything stays safe. There's security cameras, firewalls on the computers, locking systems, bouncers. <laughs> this is the part of you that ensures you stay protected. It's the part of you that's cautious and plans things carefully. The problem is often your life purpose is going to take you away from a safe and predictable future. So it becomes very active when you're starting to go in a new direction or you're wanting to infuse your present direction with more purpose. When overdeveloped, this voice can stop you from stepping forward on your life path or from being spontaneous or having great adventures. Yet, if underdeveloped, you can end up taking foolish risks, like quitting your day job without any means of support. Now let's look at quality control. This part ensures your offerings to the world have high standards. Most companies have people like this. They don't let any product go out the door without inspection. They're constantly monitoring performance of employees to ensure they represent the company in the right way. So it's the part of you that is motivated to achieve goals and do them well, to bring your best skills forward, to learn what you need to do to be your best, to get the help you need to be your best. And it's the detail oriented part of you that double and triple checks your work. If overdeveloped, this voice can be a harsh critic towards yourself and others. It can stay stuck for years, feeling like nothing is perfect enough. You're not good enough, not experienced enough. On the other hand, if underdeveloped, you can be apathetic, not really care. For example, throwing together a proposal at the last minute without much forethought, full of typos, <laughs> not really serving the purpose it was meant for. What about public relations? <laughs> well, that's a part of you that makes sure you say the right thing in the right way at the right time so that you look good to others so that you build rapport, support, and connection with important people. Any good PR company wants to make sure that you have a strong, clear brand, that you don't deviate from that brand, that you maintain a good reputation in the marketplace. Now, if overdeveloped, this voice can cause you to be over-concerned about image, worry too much about what other people think, and can stop you from moving forward on your path because of what your family, your peers, or society in general will think or say about what you're doing. Yet if underdeveloped, you might act inappropriately or make a bad impression. For example, not understanding, say the culture of your listeners during a presentation and saying something that offends people. Now let's look at the auditor. The auditor ensures you're not cutting corners, you're acting in high integrity and being considerate of the rules of the game and of all others involved in a project. If overdeveloped, this can become massive cynicism about new possibilities, not wanting to deviate at all from the rules to the point of staying stuck. If underdeveloped, you can break too many rules and have it all backfire on you. For example, a partner in a partnership was the one doing the books and was skimming money away from the other partner. And of course, it backfired on him completely and he lost the company and he lost his reputation. So now let's look at you or the end user. This is the part of you that is getting served by all these voices in an organization or a company. This would be like the customer, the client. This is the raw persona that's here to learn life's lessons. And the other voices are allies on her journey there. As I've said, sometimes those allies overfunction 
or under function. In addition to these six voices, it can serve to bring forth the voice of the mediator. This is a wise part of you that can do all the great things, say, a professional mediator can do. They can validate each perspective of your inner stakeholders. They can reframe a complaint into an ideal outcome. They can help your stakeholders see past mistaken assumptions, and they can create a win-win collaborative agreement. In fact, the mediator should be the one who makes a final decision, especially if there's a standstill. In other words, the buck stops with the mediator. Now, the difference between the mediator and the visionary is the visionary is like the CEO. They need all the board members because otherwise they could become an autocracy. Any government, group, company, or organization shouldn't ever be run by just one person because that increases the likelihood of corruption. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. It's just the nature of things. Even a solo entrepreneur should have a business coach, a mentor, a mastermind group, or a support group of people that they can run decisions by. Otherwise, they tend to make more mistakes or do stupid things. So in the case of your inner board members, your inner stakeholders, that visionary needs to be tempered by the other voices. On the other hand, the mediator is outside the realm of the organization. They are like an objective third party outside consultant whose job is to remain as objective as possible, to see the big picture, to make sure everybody's needs are taken care of, their job is to help create an agreement that is acceptable to all inner voices where possible. It will include important conditions under which you, the end user, will move forward in this new direction. In other words, the mediator's job is to fulfill your visionary's purpose while also ensuring your journey is safe, high integrity, meets with the necessary approval of those you need support from, offers good value to the world, and all those good and important things. The inner mediator needs to be a highly evolved part of you, therefore, or even a universal source of benevolence. Some people might call this their higher power, higher self, universal intelligence, use whatever understanding has the most potency for you and customize this whole process to your beliefs and your way of working with yourself. In general, it's like a trusted advisor that can tap into the deepest needs of all parts of you that's here to serve you and your life purpose. In order to come up with this sustainable agreement, you need to open up a discussion between them all so I highly suggest using what's called voice dialogue work, which is a form of active imagination. This is a process originally designed by Dr. Carl Jung, a 20th century psychoanalyst, and was used for dialoguing between the conscious of a person and their unconscious. It was further refined into what's called voice dialogue work by Hal and Sidra Stone. So you can use a journal or a notepad or a Word document or a PDF worksheet, which I will show you how to get at the end of this podcast. You'll be writing out the voice speaking and then what they say in response. It's kind of like writing a play with the character name and then their dialogue after it. You will essentially be role playing each of the voices, allowing their archetypal energy to form the words on the page. You can try to do this in your head rather than on paper, but it's much harder. The ego is programmed to distract you from doing this kind of upgrade work, like a built-in self-preservation system or booby trap. So don't fight with the distraction. Just gently bring your attention back to the process as many times as is necessary. That's why doing it on paper, using a process like this, harmonization process that's been tried and tested many times over makes it much easier. So you're going from part one, two, three to part four or completion. And the brain is a goal achieving machine and will override the distraction program if you give it this sequential goal. Also putting it on paper more easily activates this neutral, compassionate, wise mediator 
much more easily, which can do the upgrades for you. So part one is writing out your life purpose, or in some cases, maybe it's a new career direction or a more specific upgraded offer to the world if you're an entrepreneur. In other words, taking what you already offer, but defining it more specifically for a certain market or doing it all in a different way. Now you're going to start by talking to the visionary. Remember, that's the part that knows your life purpose and will go to the ends of the world to make sure it happens. So just let this part speak, no editing. If something is unclear, just keep asking the visionary questions. You'll know you are talking to the real visionary part of your psyche if you have a strong, a positive, physical or emotional reaction or a deep sense of satisfaction when reading it back to yourself. So allow the answers to even surprise you. If you feel like it's totally expected answer or you kind of feel indifferent to what gets written on the page, it might be incorrect. So keep going until you get to that positive place of rightness. So here's an example. You write the word you, then colon, and then ask a question. Visionary, how would you best describe my life purpose at this time? Then you write the word visionary, colon, and then they answer the question. You are here to serve people who are about to retire helping them find a meaningful direction for this next phase of life, helping them learn from mistakes and let go of regrets. So that was an actual <laughs> statement that came up with one of my clients from this inner visionary place. So then what we did is we went back and forth between you and the visionary. It's often good to ask the visionary more specifics. Can you give me more specifics in terms of what, where, when, who, and how to take the next best steps? So then the visionary just outlined all that. What, how many people move into retirement having a more meaningful life path? Where, online, through coaching, speaking, and writing? When, now, drop all other activities and focus here? Who, people with similar values, experience, and background to you. As in, who are you serving? How? Start by outlining an intro six session coaching program. So you just go back and forth until you feel like you've got the kind of clarity you want. So you can do this anytime you need on the journey of unfolding your career, your business vision, just to keep asking this visionary part of you where you're going and what you should be doing. But don't stop there. <laughs> part two is you want to hear all the concerns. What people normally do is they have an inspirational moment about what they want to do with their life, or they attend a workshop or work with a coach or do some journaling and come up with this great vision for their life, but then invariably all the doubts creep in, all the reasons to not go forward, all the obstacles, and then they shell the vision for another time. They get all excited and then they feel dampened down by these inner voices. But these inner voices, they just wanna make sure it's grounded, it's going to work, it's well thought through, and it's high quality, and that's why you have to do a step like this to find out what's going on that could get in your way. That said, sometimes an inner committee member, an inner stakeholder might just completely support the vision, which is good. But if they're doing their job, they'll want to play devil's advocate and show you another side of the situation. So you might hear supportive statements or concerns, just like at a committee meeting when you want to have your whole board discuss a big change in the company. The important thing is no editing. Allow any member of your inner committee to share their perspective. And again, this is for your eyes only, so feel free to write anything. So allow all possible concerns regarding your mission, vision, life, purpose that your visionary stated in part one. 
it will actually feel like a great relief to get all these out on paper so they aren't swimming around in your head in this background subconscious loop making you feel sad, tired, or full of inner conflict. You are listening now to these voices and they appreciate that. Now some concerns may seem illogical or silly or downright paranoid. <laughs> Write them down anyway. For example, you might say, what concerns do any committee members have about moving forward in this direction? So you're asking this as you, the end user, then whoever wants to come forward can come forward. Say, security says, well, you'll end up broke and burned out trying to do a business like that. So you just listen, you don't argue with this voice. So then you might say, anyone else? So public relations says, it's not very glamorous working with retired people. Okay, anyone else? Uh, so maybe quality control says, you don't have enough money to do this. Maybe the auditor says, you don't have the proper education for this. You need a degree in career counseling and you need to be registered with your association. Maybe public relations again says, oh, you'll end up having to deal with a lot of rejection to get started and that's horrible. Auditor says, you'll get corrupted by your success. Then maybe you'll hear this other voice that says, this seems off purpose. I thought my purpose would have something more to do with music. Now, maybe you don't know who said that last one. So you just write down the name of this voice as committee member. It doesn't actually matter what name gets applied to it. It's more what the concern is. So get as many down as you can. Just get them all out without arguing with them at first. Again, make sure you get down any strange things, silly, paranoid, neurotic, unlikely, unreasonable, and reasonable, or whatever. Just get it all down. No editing. Good. Now, part three is bring in the mediator. These concerns can now act as signposts to help you move forward in a sustainable, grounded way. The mediator, as I mentioned, is there to do a number of things that are going to help find agreement. So for simplicity's sake, invite the mediator to just talk to you, as in the end user, rather than to all the voices individually. You, the end user, become the voice of all the concerns in response to what the mediator asks. For example, they might ask for clarification or to help that voice look at other perspectives. So guidelines for being a good mediator are to stay curious. <laughs> the mediator asks open questions versus having a defensive discussion with that part that's stating a concern, because that's what you're probably already doing that's motivating you to do this in the first place is you're arguing inside your head. So you want to get away from that. For example, security often has concerns about money. So maybe you hear the voice talk about fear of going bankrupt. You might be tempted to fight with that voice and prove why that's just paranoid. So instead you want to ask more open questions such as what leads you to believe I might go bankrupt. And then that voice of security needs to logically think through where that comment came from and might discover that it doesn't make much sense or it's actually quite unlikely. Of course, bankruptcy could happen to anyone, but thinking it through in detail could quell that fear or at least dial it down. Now, if you ever hear a committee member say something like, that idea will never work, just a blanket, no way, Jose kind of response, you want to get underneath that. What makes you say that? Well, remember, three years ago, you tried something like that before and it failed. The mediator just asks questions to get each voice to think through their concern with wise discernment. So the mediator would validate the perspective. Okay, you say that will never work. What would you propose instead? What would work? That forces that inner voice to move from a negative, naysaying, critical perspective to a positive perspective or forward movement kind of outcome. The naysaying voice might then have to say, um, well, I can see acting as a consultant who does career counseling for a larger organization working rather than going it alone on your own completely. 
okay, great. What makes you say that? Well, then you don't have to do all this marketing. You just sell yourself to one organization, but you're still an independent entrepreneur making your own decisions. So you get into that sort of logical, discerning conversation instead of a blanket, that'll never work kind of voice coming at you, right? Another committee member might say, oh, you don't have enough credentials to do that. Again, the visionary part of you might want to respond defensively with, well, I don't need credentials. I have life experience. (laughs) But instead, the mediator is another part of you that would just be curious and ask an open question like, okay, not enough credentials. What makes you say that? Well, I've been researching others who do what I want to do, and they all have a degree in career counseling. And the mediator might say, are there some who don't have a degree in career counseling? Well, maybe. (laughs) So it's not an absolute necessity. Well, I guess not. See what I mean? You're just starting to unravel these blanket statements and get down to some sort of realistic point of view. Again, you want to empathize and validate. If you understand that they all actually want to help you lead a successful life, but sometimes they just don't do it in the right way. So just find out the deeper need, the deeper concern, what's driving it. And in some cases, re-educate those perspectives. Do some research just like you would need to do if say you brought your new business idea to your spouse your parents or others who have a stake in the decisions you make in your life. So you do it inside you first. And then when you bring it to external people in your life, you're going to come across as more legitimate. You know what I'm saying? So if you feel relieved, reassured, and more congruent after doing this exercise, then it's a good sign. If you still feel concerned, not in alignment, full of inner conflict, then go back and do parts two and three again until you get there. So part four is creating a collaborative agreement. In order to do this, you have to understand the deeper needs behind all the concerns and reframe them in terms of conditions. So here's an agreement example. I agree to move forward in this new business direction if I can attract 50,000 in year one, 100,000 in year two, and 150,000 by year three. That would be in response to security's concern about going broke. And second condition, I hire helpers for computer work and a personal assistant to help with the details. That condition might be in response to not wanting to feel burned out by going in this direction. Other conditions might be, I stay on track with my purpose. Even if I get very successful, I will do it with integrity. That condition, I bring up because after 15 years of coaching people, one of the number one reasons people don't move forward with their life purpose is they harbor this secret fear that if they become successful, they will become corrupt. They will act in low integrity ways. They'll spend their money on stupid things. They'll lose friends. People will judge them for being successful. Others will try to steal their money from them. Competitors will try to bring them down. And those fears actually outweigh fears of not having enough money. The fears of having more money than you have now can actually be more debilitating. That's why if you create an agreement with conditions with yourself ahead of time, your whole committee will feel more safe and more supportive about moving forward. I hope that makes sense. Another popular condition is I can stay centered and trusting even when there's pressures and deadlines. Now, many people don't want to build a business or take on more responsibility in their role because they're afraid that their stressed out way of being will just get amplified with more success. Again, I've seen this fear stop countless great visionary projects being manifested in the world, as I often use this as a coaching tool with people. It might mean you have to change your way of being. If you get stressed out by small deadlines now, how are you going to be when there's a lot of people counting on you to come through? So you have to make a deal with yourself that you will learn how to stay calm, centered and clear in the face of greater pressure. 
This might mean committing to a regular practice of journaling or meditating or exercise or whatever you need to stay centered. So just make a big long list of conditions and make sure it's as specific and doable sounding as possible and add it to an agreement and sign it and date it and put it somewhere you can see it regularly and review it from time to time. Now, will you be able to fulfill on all these conditions right away? Maybe, maybe not, but the intention is huge and acts like a magnet for bringing those goals into reality because without the intention, your inner committee members will likely block the visionary part of you completely. If they see there's a willingness, if they see this good intention and you ask for their help to stay on purpose with those intentions, they are happy to help. But again, you have to ask. So once you've done that, it's going to make a huge difference to them being on board with your vision. Most people don't know how to discover the underlying needs of their inner committee and so just loop in self-sabotage for years to come. So give this a try. In the show notes, you'll see a link so that you can buy a downloadable fill in the blanks handout along with a video tutorial called the harmonization process. It's on special right now if you want to get it. Of course, you can just do this on your own in a journal, but some people find all the examples written out and the fill in the blanks process very useful and the video tutorial as a good reference. And some people really want customized help doing a process like this, where they work with an experienced coach like me to lead them through it, make sense of it, and then guide them to take action until they get results. So if you're interested in applying for a free demo one-to-one coaching session on that, just look for the link in the show notes. There's a short questionnaire to fill out. And if we feel it would be a good fit, we get together on say Zoom and do a demo coaching session and see if we want to work together on that for a coaching series. So that's it for today. I hope it was useful. Do hit like, share, and subscribe if you want to hear about other episodes coming up. See you next time. And thank you so much for listening.